All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Double Take Sports Talk with the Watch Brothers. Thank you for tuning in. I am Daryl Watts on the opposite side. Say hello to Daryl Watts. Daryl Watts, what's happening? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to our podcast, Daryl Watts, what's happening? Not a whole lot of nothing. Another day of podcasting. I'll tell you that. You ain't lying on that. You sure ain't lying on that. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You laughing that? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Quit making fun of me. That's all I kept giving for people all day. You sound horrible. You look horrible. Well, thank you. Thank you. Like you need to take some medicine. I sat there and drank three cups of Alka Seltzer all day long in three hour intervals. Wow. That's a lot. <sighs> well, I ain't blowing my nose like how I used to. That used to be every three to five minutes, sneezing every three to five minutes. I had to make sure my brain's still in, intact and not on my Kleenex when I'm blowing my nose. I'm <laughs> just saying. <laughs> just saying. It's ridiculous. Well, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's on top of our podcast today for our NBA edition, we got our, our weekend review, and then we got Dan's analysis, and followed by predictions, and then we're going through headlines, and then our final thoughts of the show. Dan, you ready to do this? Born ready. All right, born ready. Let's do this. Let's go right on ahead and ship right on to weekend review. This is not going to be long, I tell you that, and I was so happy about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I believe that. Yeah. My analysis is what took the longest. Yeah. Playing catch up. <clears throat> Playing catch up. Mm-hmm. All right, taking a quick look at the Ricky review. Oh, before I even get into the Ricky review, I have got to ask you this. Did you see what Odell Beckham Jr. did Monday night? I was cracking up when I saw it. Oh, my God. He was cracking up, too. He was. I I love it. it. I love it. I did. I I loved it. And I lost it. It was too funny. Tell you something. I don't care what everybody say about Odell Beckham. If anything was the best out of him, that was it. That was the best. That was it. That was Mm -hmm. it. I like, died yeah. when I saw that. I got a salute for you, buddy. <laughs> yes, sir. I watched that at least six, seven different times. Yes, each day. I, I showed it out. So did I. I was just crack it so up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love I've that scene. that. He just sat there first, and then he was like, what's this dude doing? <laughs> 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 I lost it. I did too. I did not know what that dude was up to. But I, <laughs> when I see Randy Moss and when I see Odell running up, I said, What is this dude doing? And I see him do that. I lost it. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Man, People I lost be it. watching, but man, yeah. these young cats be watching some football, man. They know oh, yeah. the deal. They, they know the deal. Oh, yeah. They watched What's Randy that? Moss fight when he did that back in 98. Wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I know. He, that's the reason why he know about it. He either knew about yeah. it or just sat down and re-watched it. But, yeah, he, he most likely watched that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. I had to. I had to see if you watched that. Because if you didn't, I was going to make you watch that one. Oh, uh, no. I watched it. I saw that one. That was trending. That was hilarious. <laughs> I loved it. Me it too. was awesome. Me too. Me too. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Now that I got that out the way, I have to get that out the way. I had to hang. So let's go ahead and. <laughs> oh, so sorry. Excuse me. Let's go ahead into the weekend review. This is from. Whew. I don't even know what to say. From the second part of the championship series now to the World Series. So from, um, we're going to go back to the, uh, 
AL Championship Series between the Red Sox and the Astros, of course, at the time from last week's recording. Um, Red Sox had led the series three games to one. And going into October 18th, the final game, uh, I think this is game five, uh, the Red Sox defeat the Astros four to one. Uh, they win the series four games to one to advance to the World Series. The winning pitcher of this one was David Price, in which he really up his game in the playoffs. I got to give it to him, apparently. Um, losing pitcher, this was just Justin Borlander. Verlander, I'm sorry. Borlander. Uh, and the save goes to Ke Craig Kim Kimbrell. I cannot read today. The NLDS. Ooh, I'm so sorry. Ooh. Want to change that. Um, the NLCS between the Dodgers and the Brewers. At the time of last week's recording, the, Do the Dodgers was leading this series three games to two, and I got to apologize. I accidentally put uh, the Brewers beating the Dodgers in game, I think it was four, and it was the opposite way around. Uh, October 19th, the Brewers beat the Dodgers seven to two. The winning pitcher of this one was Corey Knebel, and losing pitcher of this one is Hyung Jin Rio. And the series is tied 3 3. October 20th, game seven of the final game. Uh, the Dodgers beat the Brewers five games to one. They win this series four games to three. The winning pitcher of this one was Ryan Matson, and then the losing pitcher was Jules Jashin. And on to the World Series, the Los Angeles Dodgers versus the Boston Red Sox. Game one, October 23rd, Red Sox beat the Dodgers 8-4. to four. Winning pitcher of this was Matt Barnes. Losing pitcher was Clayton Kershaw. And game two, and the final game, uh, October 24th, <clears throat> Red Sox beat the Dodgers 4-2. to two. Winning pitcher of this was David Price. And the losing pitcher is Hio Jin Rio. And game three would be Thursday night. Tonight. I'm oh, sorry. No, it's tomorrow night. No, it's Friday night. I'm sorry. I thought it was tonight. Is it tonight, bro? Uh, let me do, I just looked at it. I thought it was tonight. I thought it was tomorrow night. Nope, it is. You're right. Tomorrow night. <clears throat> You're right. It's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Friday night is game three, and that is going to shift to Los Angeles. That's all I have for weekly review. Do you want to add anything to that? No, nothing. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and shift gears, and let's focus on your analysis. So, right. Whenever you're getting ready, for sure. All right, so this is what I did. I compiled the last four games <clears throat> of the Pacers games that they played from the last time we did our recording. Excuse me. Oh, okay, sorry. So what's going on, what I did was was just compile some basic <clears throat> game notes for each of the games. Starting off with man, I had a lot of them. Starting out yes, with you do. the Milwaukee Bucks and the Indiana Pacers down at the BMO Harris Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Game notes for this game, and these are all just what I made off the top of my head. The Pacers got out got outplayed the entire game. Bucks had the biggest lead of 28, shot 47% from the field, and shot 37% from the three-point range. The Pacers got out hustled the entire game. Pacers bench struggled to put up numbers as the Bucks starting five put more points up on the board than their own bench and the Pacers starting five. Add maybe 17 or 20 points to that. The Bucks starting five scoring points, they would have scored more than the benches and the Pacers starting five combined. This is a learning curve for the Pacers as they will try to rebound from getting out hustled. Points, assists, steals, blocks, and turnovers got them beat pretty badly. Bucks are looking good to start off this season. Agreed. And just the one quick note, both the Pacers and the Bucks committed 17 turnovers as a team. Um, Milwaukee had 27 assists and the Pacers had 14 assists. And the starters for the Milwaukee Bucks scored 84 points. Pacers starters scored 56, and the bench scored 45. Milwaukee's bench scored 30, 
four. Next game, Brooklyn Nets, Indiana Pacers, down at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, Indiana. Game notes for this game. What stands out against the Nets, the same thing that stood out against the Grizzlies. Scoring. Seven Pacers for the Indiana Pacers scored in double figures. Six for the Nets. Here's something else Nate McMillan did good on. <clears throat> Everybody getting the share of the pizza. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stop it. The minute spread is spread it out evenly, and everybody is productive. The results, plain and simple. Work got done. Congratulations to the Pacers in that win. And here's exactly I what I mean. That. And here's what I mean by that. The Pacers starters scored 61 points. I'm sorry, 77 points. The bench scored 55 points. The net starters scored 61, and the bench scored 51 points. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Pacers starting five only committed four turnovers. The bench scored six, which makes a total of 20, I'm sorry, 10 turnovers for the Pacers and then 20 for the Bucks as they uh, committed 12 as the starting five and the bench uh, committed eight turnovers. That is not the way you want to win games if you want to advance. <clears throat> Next game, Pacers. Timberwolves down at the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Wolves have Carl Anthony Towns. What happens when Cat put up good numbers? They get results and wins. Pacers alone cannot outdo what the Wolves have in Cat. Now, if you play Cat hard and face him and, and challenge him, you should have something. But shooting 50% from the field would not stop Cat from putting up numbers. Make him uncomfortable. <laughs> that didn't happen. None of the Pacers bench tallied up double-figure scoring in this game. Tipper Wolves played lockdown defense and did a job well done. So what's next? Learn and move on. Plain and simple. Carl Anthony Towns, 17 points, 15 total rebounds off 13 defensive rebounds and two offensive rebounds. <clears throat> The Pacer bench did not score in double figures. As I said, Tyreek Evans only scored two points. Uh, in their loss, Demonis the Sabonis only scored eight. Uh, both teams committed 15 turnovers, but based off of different uh, numbers on turnovers, the Minnesota Timberwolves starting five committed 11, while the Pacers, I mean, I'm sorry, while the Minnesota bench committed four. The Pacers starting bench committed nine turnovers, and the bench committed six. How did the Pacers still lose this game? Plain and simple. You got Carl Anthony Towns, like I said. Nobody cannot stop that man. The Pacers scored 70 points. That's starting team, and the bench only scored 21. That is not enough production against a team like the Minnesota Timberwolves. They score 58 points as starters and then the bench score 43 points. Absolutely inexcusable. Pacers would have to do better than that if they want to win more games. And then the last game, San Antonio Spurs, Indiana Pacers down at AT&T Center in San Antonio, Texas. Here are my game notes. Yeah, here's my game notes for this game. What happened here? Well, let's just say that this new generation of players are not used to the old school style of basketball. Okay. This is what I call a big learning curve for San Antonio. This will put a lot of players' talents at question. You got a pace of team, which, by the way, continued the trend of seven players scoring in double figures. Third time this year, I believe, if I tally that up right. But also have a Pacer team that is just better prepared to play. Better chemistry. Now, San Antonio had to start over and is not quite clicking yet. San Antonio committed 13 turnovers, where the Pacers only committed 10. That is good for both teams, but the Spurs got to kick it up a notch here if they want to be a better team. Pops philosophy, don't let the ball stick. 16 turnovers, I'm sorry, 16 assists, Pacers, 34. That explain anything? Ball sticking. Ball sticking. Can't let the ball stick. Only one player scored in double figures for the San Antonio bench. That was Marco Bellinelli with 16 points. The San Antonio team, like I said, committed 13 turnovers. The Pacers committed 10. The starters for the Spurs committed seven. 
the bench committed six. Pacer bench, I'm sorry, starters committed seven, and then the bench committed three. The Pacers won this game by the final score of 116 to 96. Joe, you got anything you want to add to the analysis? I will add this. From the games that the Pacers won, if they would get bench production, mm-hmm. in all honesty, yeah. the Pacers, in my personal opinion, would be 4-1. and one. Yeah. I, I, and I think I started to notice a trend when all the players are playing above 20, 20 minutes each game, it don't matter from the from the starters to the bench. One thing to note that I forgot to mention, now that I now that I think about it, and I forgot to mention it, and I don't remember which team it came off from. The who was it? It might have been a losing effort, but it was still a point that I wanted to make. Uh, who was it? I have no idea. Was it Brooklyn? Nope. So it might have been Minnesota. Yep, in a losing effort, had to been Minnesota. Nope, it might have been San Antonio. Yep, the pace of bench <clears throat> outscored the starting bench. I mean, the starting players only by two. Fifty-nine points to the Pacers starting five, fifty-seven. And just like you said, they have to be the Pacers bench will have to be more productive. More productive, and and even though they lost that game, I think if the spread was even evenly out and continued to um, score and play twenty minutes and above for all players that's going to be playing in this game, I think everybody will have. I think the Pacers will have a better chance at having a better record. I agree. I agree. Excuse me. Now you just really couldn't do nothing about Minnesota. Pacers oh no. The Pacers bench could have outscored the Pacers starting lineup all they want to. Yeah, well, it, 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 nothing you could do about board. that. No, no, absolutely nothing. And the Bucks too. So bro. yeah, and the, yeah, the Giannis uh, Puko, you can't do nothing with him either. He's he's just too tall. He got long, lengthy arms. Can't do nothing with him. He's too athletic. He's point four. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Out here, but you got to wash the dishes and clean it up. You so. ain't lying on that. All right, so the preview for the Indiana Pacers and the Cleveland Cavaliers. They will be uh, facing off, I want to say, Saturday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Three and two Pacers going up against the zero and four Cleveland Cavaliers. The last time they matched up against each other was in a preseason matchup October 8, 2018. Pacers won 111 to 102. Victor Oladipo with 23 points, Demonis Sabonis with 12, and Derek Collison led the Pacers with four assists. And on the flip side of Cleveland, uh, Kyle Corvus scored 17 points. George, George Hill uh, got seven rebounds, and George Hill had five assists. So, what's going to have to happen in this game for the Pacers to win? Plain and simple. Just like how I said with the NFL podcast with the Coats and the Cavaliers, I mean, with the Coats and the Raiders, show up. That's how you got to do. Show up, you will win. Plain and simple. Not much different here. Pacers shooting better at 49%. I don't even think I can do my marker anymore like how I used to. Let me see if I can. Yeah, see, I can't do my marker anymore. That just hurts my. That sucks. That hurts my. That feet. sucks. I would have to do this, and I kind of don't even like doing this, but. Yeah, I would have to do this now, like this, at all. Oh, not anyway. Not right, because I haven't done it yet. I'm still trying to get it up. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that would have to happen for them, for the Pacers, that they need to continue to shoot better. As you can see, 49% to 43%. Pacers shooting better, three points compared to theirs, 32%. But you don't want to commit fouls. They are a better shooting team, and they can shoot their way right back into free throws if the Pacers commit too many fouls. 
One thing that's missing to that addition is going to be Kevin Love, I think, personally. Um, he's out. Yeah, one of these games. because you got Kyle Korver as a three-point threat, and then you have uh, Kevin Love as the other threat. <clears throat> and Kevin Love is going to play his style of basketball. So the scary part about that is, is that when Kevin Love gets healthy again, he might be playing his style, and that's going to hurt a lot of East teams just based off of that. And here's what I mean by that. Rebounds, offensive and defensive. He's not a cis person but he can get in there and block if he needs to, and it's over if he does. So the one thing that you want to going to be able to do is box him out. He may not be playing, but that's for future reference. Box him out. Because if he can't get – Tristan Thompson is he's healthy too. Yep. If you can't – if you get – if you get Kevin Love in double figures and points and rebounds, you can forget the game. Plain and simple. You can forget the game. You can easily forget this game. So, bearing that in mind, <coughs> excuse me, bearing that in mind, right now, as a stand, all the Pacers got to do is show up, and they should win. They should show up. That's all they got to do. There's my analysis. There is the previews. Um, so for the predictions, Daryl, Saturday night, who you got? Pacers, Cavs, who you got? Pacers, you, got that. you do. You got the Pacers. Now, one last question. World Series, who you got? Who you got taking it all the way? Red Sox are looking too hungry. Dude. They really are. They have really stepped up. David Price has stepped up. They're looking up. I, 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 I want to see the Dodgers. Me too. I look like Boston is going to. Yeah, I don't want to see Boston, but Boston look like they're going to take it. So I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree. There you have it. Our predictions for the World Series and for the Pacers. Now we'll go back to headlines. We are good and ready. The floor is yours. It is 8 o'clock, just so you know. Yeah, yeah, right here. <coughs> so, quick headlines. No MLB headlines for the third straight time. Um, go for ahead. Take a look at the, the NBA and NFL world. Starting with the NBA, uh, Chicago Bulls. Bobby Portis has an MCL sprain. It's going to be out four to six weeks. That's another addition. Hurt gone. Kevin Love out Thursday night game with a sore foot. Just talk about that too. Um, son, Devin Booker leaves the uh, Lakers game with a strain, a strain left hamstring. No timetable. James Harden to miss next two games with a hamstring injury. And a report. Rockets offered the Timberwolves four first round picks. With Jimmy Butler. On to the NFL. NFL fires official Hugo Cruz for performance reasons. But John Gruden does not see any more trades happening. You bet not. And <laughs> Grot returns to practice. Of course, he has a back and ankle in. A trade line uh, deadline, October 30th. Who's going to have a new home? And, of course, we've mentioned this once before, I think, in the podcast. Drew Brees and the Saints, they have beat the Ravens, and Drew Brees has beat all 32 teams. So, congratulations to him once again for beating the 32 teams in the NFL. That's all I have for my headlines for the NBA <laughs> and NFL. Derek, you got any thoughts on these headlines? Ask you a couple of them. Devin Booker, okay. that's that's gonna hurt the Suns. James Harden, that's gonna hurt the uh hurt the um Rockets. Well they hurt anyway. Yeah, and then the Rockets offer first four round picks for Jimmy Butler. That probably would give them a boost, but who knows it may not. Uh that's gonna I'm sorry. That's gonna look I'm... like a mini a mini super team on the bench. That's what it looks like to me. Four first round picks though. I don't think he's worth first four round picks. Yeah, I, I think right. he's. 
I, 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 two would be acceptable. And I would accept two too, because four, four, you couldn't even lead the Bulls to a championship. No. Y'all alone trying to get four first round picks. And then you uh, got- not, yeah, something wrong with this picture. They just won't. Yeah, they just won't. Yeah, they just won't. They're desperate. And then my concern: Did you know what Hugo Hugo Cruz got fired for? Specifically, in the behalf of performance reasons, or here's the thing: he has been he has been um, lacking their uh, in these uh, season games lately. Just 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 the season here. So the last straw for him. Was I think week six when the Chargers and the Browns played and completely just blew a false start on San Diego and Phillip Rivers tossed a 26 yard touchdown pass. Not like it was going to do anything because Cleveland wasn't good in that game. They were already getting their ass kicked. Yeah. So, but still, <laughs> your, your performance in that calling calls was. Pretty deep if you're going to – because this is not – this is the first time they have actually fired an official mm-hmm. in the middle of the season. They I usually do all that, at, you know, during the offseason. Mm-hmm. They do it all during the offseason. So that right there, I this tell, right here, I tell you, you get jacking up, my man. And yeah. <laughs> they had to get rid of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had to get rid of him. Yep. So that <laughs> – yeah, I was like, okay, that was, that was, I was going to get to that too. So I'm glad you kind of dropped that up because I was going to bring it up. And so yeah, he has, he had those issues. The last okay. straw was that by start. Okay. Well, that's all I have for my thoughts on headlines. <clears throat> all right. Doing up. Um, I felt like after the headlines for this, um. So go ahead and shift gears on to the final thoughts of our podcast. Yeah. You got anything for us on um, final thoughts? Nope. So, if there's nothing else, to so go ahead and wrap this up and get on out of here. Do it. All right. All right. That is another edition of Double Take Sports Talk. If you like what you see, just give this video a thumbs up. How do you feel about today's show? Just comment in the comment section below as usual. If you have any questions for us, go on the social media so. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You just hit us up there. And of course, if you like it, we'll share them on the air. So check that out there. Um, also, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and go on iTunes. Leave us a review and rate our show. It helps us a way to find a way to improve on our show. But until then, I'm Daryl. There. Sorry, I've decided. Yep. All right. Catch you with us on another episode of Double Take Sports Talk. Until then, Ciao. Double Take Sports Talk here with me, Daryl Watts. Now, there's an understatement that always goes that has always been true from day one when sports decided to come out is that it can be very unpredictable. And of course, that's always been the statement that's always been so true. And depending on how you look at it, it can be very unpredictable. But with Double Take Sports Talk, we just throw some entertainment in there. Even if we don't get predictions right or theories don't come out right, we always just throw a little entertainment into the mix. So why not just have a little fun with it? That's how predicting can be so fun if you make an entertainment out of it. But other than that, of course, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. But anyway, we're on social media around the, around the globe here, or or social media on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, you can hit us up on our fan page uh, at the Watch Brothers. You can hit us up on Twitter at DTSD2414, and of course, you can hit us up on Instagram. Uh, Double Take Sports Talk. So, YouTube, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You can share, 
You can do all the good stuff, do anything that you would like. We just try to grow a podcast here. We're also on the iTunes. You can download our episodes there. We're on the video course and we're on the audio portion too. So either way that you can enjoy this podcast, you can do it audio, you can do it on video. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the podcast. And until then, ciao.